Yeah. This is basically down the road for me. I woke up to hearing about this and I was like, no way. No way. How and why did this happen? So we're going to check this out. Yeah, so Casey, according to authorities, this all happened around 1.30 a.m. Eastern oh time. Oh, my time. God. Here in Baltimore, a large shipping container oh at that hour, uh, it appears, based on the videos that we've seen, uh, collided and hearing from authorities that uh, that shipping container collided with the um, one of the columns of Jeez. the key bridge in Baltimore. It is, as you mentioned, a major commuter bridge. Oh, um, this is going to be... Route, uh, as you cut through Baltimore, going between, let's say, Washington and New York, all, all the way uh, up the Northeast. Um, and it appears that in the bridge collapsed. Uh, you can see it in the video crumble into several pieces. And authorities think there are potentially up to 20 people in the water. They don't know. As you mentioned, there was some sort of large uh, tractor. Is it early morning or something they said? On the bridge at the time. So it wasn't a lot um, of people. But that is what emergency crews are now looking for. Anyone who is uh, in vehicles or in the water. One person that may have is ended too up much. Down in the this is sad. Uh, first responders have been there at the scene. The clean up, the rebuild, all of that. That's going to uh, be. And there's an urgent search right now, urgent rescue for any people uh, who could be there in the water. Uh, and right now, the entire area around the bridge is shut down. There are crews not only from Baltimore, but from surrounding agencies, from federal agencies that are assisting with this, uh, because this is a, a very, very serious incident and serious rescue operation that's now underway. As I mentioned before, we arrived in Baltimore a little while ago. We're probably about a quarter mile from the bridge at this point, but but the area is shut down. Police have shut down the road. They're only letting those I'm first responder sure. vehicles, understandably, come in and out uh, because the water there in the Patapsco River uh, is roughly 48 degrees uh, based on, on some of the data that we have found online. Um, it's cold water. People uh, who end up submerged in that water would likely have, you know, one to three hours where they could survive in temperatures like that. And so crews are desperately trying to get people out as quickly well, as they possible. Swim, maybe they the swim to the edges. It's been roughly three and a half hours since this all started, Casey. And so really for the crews, if they... Could you imagine the fear them, and the horror, that something like that happening? In the water, the clock is really ticking. I already don't and like so going over certain they have bridges. Divers in the water. They are trying to locate people. We know that the, the mayor, uh, Brandon Scott, uh, tweeted out a couple hours ago that this was a, a significant event, that he was on route to it, that the governor uh, of Maryland was aware as well, um, and that they were working with these various other agencies uh, to uh, work on this rescue operation. Obviously, the sun is soon to come up here in Baltimore. It's going to be another day for commuters where this is going to create serious problems. Oh, I'm sure. This area here in Baltimore and have implications all the way, likely from, from D.C. up to... Well, good you know, thing it wasn't area, rush hour. Maybe even beyond that, but that's really forward-thinking at this point. Uh, right now, the good focus Lord, on this, is on this desk. How does that? You steer right into that like that. People who might be in the water after this ship. Were they sleeping? Collided ...with the key bridge and, and sent, sent it crashing down. Yeah, no, absolutely critical to focus on on that uh, at this point. And uh, Gabe, we also have this just in. Uh, the Secretary of, of Transportation, uh, Pete Buttigieg, says that he has talked with the governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, uh, and with the mayor of Baltimore, Mayor Scott, uh, to offer federal support uh, from the Department of Transportation uh, after this incident. He says rescue efforts m remain underway. Drivers, he notes, in the Baltimore area should follow local responder guidance um, on detours uh, and the response. And as we said, uh, Kevin Cartwright, uh, who is with the Baltimore Fire uh, Department, says that they are searching for up to 20 people uh, who may be in the river right now, along with multiple vehicles. I'm just going to ask uh, our control room to, to put up. We have some um, still images of the scene, of the aftermath of the scene. Uh, that are a little bit uh, brighter that we can perhaps there we go so you can see um, that's the container ship itself uh, oh, that, that was the container ship on the left. this is the damage 
uh, to uh, the bridge. Um, but those containers, uh, of course, That's uh, take them uh, are uh, part of the vessel. Time. And we're also receiving reports that some of them uh, may be unstable. And that this that. is, of course, uh, making this rescue scene uh, all the more difficult uh, for first uh, responders uh, who are trying desperately uh, to rescue uh, these people. We spoke here at CNN uh, to the Baltimore City uh, Fire Department uh, spokesman around 4.30 a.m. Eastern time. So this was a, the latest update of, of about an hour ago. So almost uh, nobody was probably on the bridge. And then uh, stick with me. We'll talk about it on the other side. Good Lord. If that had happened during rush we hour. We are here at uh, Fort Armistead Park uh, in the midst of uh, managing a mass casualty multi-agency uh, incident here. Uh, as you know, approximately 1.30 this, this morning, nuts. a vessel uh, traveling this through the nuts. Patapsico River uh, outbound collided with a column uh, causing the collapse of the uh, key bridge. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we understand that there was many as uh, up to 20 individuals who uh, may be in the Patapsico River right now, as well as uh, multiple vehicles. So we have, uh, as indicated, a mass casualty multi-agency incident um, underway. So that was, again, Kevin Cartwright of the Baltimore City uh, Fire Department telling us uh, that at this hour, uh, or last hour, I should say, there were up to 20 people known to be in the water uh, as well uh, as vehicles, uh, that there are divers uh, in the water uh, trying uh, to rescue um these individuals we're, we're joined on the phone stuck uh, in their uh, cars. Or, me, uh, via Skype. Uh, Andy McCabe is still uh, with us. Andy, um, you mentioned, uh, again, we're being careful to speculate about whether this was an intentional uh, or accidental. I know, that's uh, what I'm act. like. And you did talk about sort of the follow-on effects, but when they're trying to figure out actually how this occurred, what sort of data is, tends to be available in these um, exactly what I was thinking. Computers on the ship. Some type of um, attack. What, what do you know or what can you kind of tell us in terms of what sort of information threads are available for them to pull on beyond um, just obviously, of course, interviewing the individuals who uh, were in charge of piloting the ship? Sure. So, the, you know, a lot of that depends, Casey, on how, um, you know, on the yeah, details okay. of the ship, how old it is, what sort of technology it's equipped with. Yeah, it's okay. um, According to you know, so that's going to really set the table in terms of what sort of information or data you have to work with. But you can imagine the entire kind of scope of GPS data and systems data uh, that really will show you exactly how, where, when the ship uh, was last kind of put on the course that brought it to impacting the, that column, um, the number of people who were involved in piloting the ship at the time, the sort of inputs uh, that those folks were delivering into those systems to steer the ship. Um, you know, there, there's, uh, that, that can vary greatly. If this is like a really old vessel that's in a state of disrepair and hasn't been kind of updated, that data could be pretty uh, rudimentary. Uh, but any sort of inputs that go into that system, um, you know, if it's on a set course that had been planned out, you know, uh, sometime before, it looks less likely that someone at the last second took it off course and uh, into that column. Um, so those are, those are kind of some of the systems that they'll be looking for to see if they even exist on the boat before they find out uh, what sort of... Uh, uh, data they have uh, in in this situation, um, but again, you know those people who are at the controls of those systems are going to be your best resource. Yeah. What they really need right now is some cooperation. What the hell happened? And some kind of uh, you know really solid interview feedback. So I've seen uh, from listen, those folks. I go walking in an area that's near a bridge, and um, these ships have. A certain amount of time to make course corrections. So I'm sitting here wondering what in the hell caused that to happen. This is ridiculous. I hope they save as many people as possible, but that's one of them things, man. You don't know who can swim. You don't know who can't swim. You got people in these cars. They got dumped into the damn water. It's cold. 
You're about to be trapped in your car, your truck. Cars, for, uh, man, that's some scary stuff, man. <sighs> Post your comments down below. Let me know if y'all know anything else about this. What happened? Whether they found out? Was it intentional? Was it an attack? Was it just negligence? What was it? I'll talk to y'all later.